So today I've got an absurd deck on the ladder. We get to play Herd of Migration without worrying about meat hooks and play Drag to the Bottom to get us out of trouble when we need it. This is my absolute favourite current deck. Hey everyone, Hex here and today we're playing some Domain Shenanigans on the best of one ladder in Standard. Before we get going, as always, I really appreciate your support for the channel and if you haven't yet, go ahead and click the subscribe button below to not miss out on future content. But let's get into today's deck, a sweet domain pile that I saw on Twitter and changed slightly for the best of one queue. Uh, it controls the early game before we get busy with some big hitters later on. So starting with our wing cons, four copies of Herb Migration, a sorcery that for seven mana creates a 3-3 for each basic land type we control, so that's hopefully five. And we always get to cycle this card for two to two to a basic land if we need to. Put that card in your hand and gain three life. I have no problem playing this card into black decks now as Meat Hook is gone and I'm pretty confident the creatures survive at least one turn. Our other main win con is Titan of Industry. Uh, we get to play this from our hand or from our graveyard using our Cruelty of Gixes, uh, but the mana shouldn't be a problem for us in this deck. Other domain cards include Leyline Binding, an outstanding card which should always just cost one mana. Drag to the bottom, a 4 drop sorcery that gives all creatures minus x minus x until end of turn where x is your domain count plus 1. So this is a great alternative to meat hook and fits perfectly in this deck. Lastly Shadow Prophecy, that for 3 and at instant speed get to look at the top x cards where x is your domain count and put 2 of them into your hand. To go along with these cards we're playing 3 one of creatures, we've got Archangel of Wrath, Shieldridge and Shijeki. Each can be tutored with Cruelty of Gix and each do something unique to answer any problems we may be facing. For ramp and card draw, we've got Courier's Briefcase, Fable, The Celestus, and playing some Bankbusters too. Removal wise, uh, Kami War and Terra Sunder. And lastly, an Urborg Repossession to get our creatures back to our hand from our graveyard. We're playing 26 lands and a lot of tap lands, but our goal is to hang in there, then drop some beasts and some titans. I absolutely love this deck and several times I find myself stabilizing on one life, blowing up the board, then dropping a herd migration, attacking for 15. Anyway, I've now got some games I played with this deck and they go pretty well, so stay tuned. All right, game one, opening hand is, I mean, it's acceptable. Uh, we don't have that early green, but we do have a drag to the bottom of our hand, so this is definitely a keeper. We'll try and just stay in there until we get a chance to drag to the bottom and then use the Gixes to take over. As we just exchange some lands here, so opponent looks like they're on mono black. We certainly could be doing it with a different color land or something else to play. But uh, okay, here comes a Trespasser. That's fine. We do have Shadow Prophecy in our hands. So we do get to look at the top two cards of our library. And it's a Titan and a Drag, so we get to put them both in our hands. Not ideal there. Jetmir is good though. Get to at least get down a green mana. So opponent now has a 4-4 on the board. And um, our domain is currently at 4. Because they play an underdog. Tricky cards to keep away from the battlefield unless we can find some of our X artifacts. And they attack us for four. Okay, we draw a binding. So we're not in the greatest position at the moment. Uh, we could ramp here with the briefcase or we could just drag to the bottom and uh, reset the board on the 14 life. This is our meat hook massacre in our deck. And it works just perfectly here. We get to remove their creatures. Now they do get to blitz their underdog out if they want to, but it's just a bank buster. Okay, so feel like we've settled down a little bit now. It's an opportunity to play our briefcase. We do have our binding open, which is one of our key cards, as it has a flash. So we could bind the bank buster here but it might be worth it to wait until the opponent has something better on the board. And it's a cut down on our 1-1, one -one. not a problem. So we let them draw. I don't really want to bind this bank buster. I'm looking for a shieldred maybe to bind um, or even the underdog there from the graveyard, but it seems like the, the uh, opponent is mana screwed, so 
and they draw with the bank buster and clearly no mana so I think now we'll just take out the bank buster while we have an opportunity and we draw our sixth mana which is great so that's our full domain now and let's have a look in the opponent's hand see what they're playing with uh, okay three removals and one of those um, instants that brings back a creature that dies so that's the problem here is they've got way too much removal in their hands we don't really play any creatures so it is worth to know though when we have this a titan here though but they do get to blitz out the underdog draw a card again that would be something I would like to exile now we get to look for any card and put it into our hand so our win condition is herb migration or if we feel we're we want to tackle this underdog we could always take a binding here but no let's try and win this game the best the opponent can do here is uh, pick off our beasts one by one and we are pretty sure that there's no meat hook massacre as that is a ban from this morning so the herb migration is a pretty decent card card today i think and it's a sorin okay so i don't think this helps i think they would have had to have made a two three there um but they're going dig in i'm not really sure what for i guess just a swamp they play it so it's 15 damage coming our way coming their way sorry from us here we get to put a creature from a graveyard the battlefield i don't think we have anything so we'll take their trespasser and we can get rid of that underdog at last So this was a sneaky way to get rid of their threat there. Okay, so we can attack now with our beasts. Deciding whether it was worth not attacking Sorin, but I think judging by what's in their hand, it's probably best just to take out Sorin, take out their card advantage. And we do have other options here, and that being a Titan. If there's ever a card that makes people scoop when they're only on eight life, this could be it and we will gain some life to put it put ourselves completely out of the way here throw a shield counter on our titan as i can see the opponent's got several infernal grasps even an invoke despair now wouldn't work okay they do have an invoke despair and yeah they get their bank buster back but there is a lot of damage on board so Herd Migration has seen us through here against a mono black deck which cle with clearly way too much removal. Uh, whether they've swapped out the Meat Hook Massacres for these um, Fake Your Own Deaths, which are a cute card when they work, but when they don't work, they're just wasted in your hand. And opponent scoops it up. Nice one. And on to the next game. All right, on the play. And this is a really good hand, actually. Terra Sunder and Briefcase. And we have early green mana, so I'm really liking this one. Up against Boros, it seems. So yeah, just keep hitting our land drops and I think we'll be good here. Opponent may, if they are on just a pure Boros deck, be quite aggressive, so Terra Sunder's gonna be pretty good. We get to ramp here with our Briefcase. And opponent with a firebrand, okay. So maybe some kind of aggro deck like I thought. So we just draw another land. So not ideal there. Drop a mountain, play the Celestus. Pass our turn. I guess we do have Terra Sunder open if absolutely necessary. Opponent plays a Cavalier, okay. So that's six damage. And we can't block it because of Radar's um, attacking trigger. So definitely going to want to deal with one of these creatures as we draw a shield rid, which is a nice draw as the opponent's going to struggle to get through it and Radar isn't going to be able to target shield rid. But I go for the Kami wall whilst we have the opportunity. So it's quite an early Kami wall there, turn four. And uh, Firebrand is going to cause problems all game, so we can get rid of that, hold back our 1-1. One, one. 
So although we haven't stabilized next turn and the turn after, uh, the Kami Wars triggers are going to really sort of try to take over this game as they play another Firebrand and attack us with their 3-3. And we find an Archangel of Wrath, which is a really nice card to have. So we get to put the Firebrand back in their hand. It doesn't have haste, so it's a good target here. And we get to, I mean, we could drop a, an Archangel of Wrath here, but to get full value from it, you want to do it with uh, six mana. Uh, we do get to play Sheldred though, which is a fantastic blocker. And we do get to start doing some incremental damage each turn. Uh, it's a Brutal Cathar, okay. It's a nice answer for our Sheldred there. So this damage is starting to rack up now. We're down to eight. And the Kami War is now a 6-6, six, six, so that's a nice blocker in itself. We get to play our Archangel here, and we get to kick it twice, so we can take out the Cathar and hit our opponent for two as well. And we get our shoulder back. All right, so even a Brutal Cathar here off the top, we've still got many creatures on the board here and it's just uh, facing down a 3-3. Three, three. So three of our creatures can block their 3-3. Three, three. Okay, it is another Brutal Cathar. And they go for the 6-6, six, six. fair enough. Okay, and we draw a Shadow Prophecy, which is a nice way to draw some cards here. But I think the obvious play here is to kill this Brutal Cathar and get our Kami War back and take out the Sunrise Cavalier. And that's the problem with using a Cathar on the Kami. All right, game number three here. And this hand's, it's okay. We don't have a white mana for the binding. We do have Fable to try and find that though. So we'll be keeping this one. Uh, we get to play our tap land though on turn one. Opponent with a Carpluson Forest, so currently a gruel style deck the great thing about herb migration is early on like this you can cycle it for a land so probably look for a white mana on this turn as opponent drops a swamp and say go probably holding some removal here as that tends to be the playing pattern with these jund decks unless an underdog comes down but we get to play our planes and Past the turn, we get to hold open Binding and Shadow Prophecy. Opponent with a Springs and a Liliana, okay. So we probably don't have a way of killing Liliana on with damage anytime soon. So this is probably a good target for the Binding here. Um, otherwise this could get out of control, this Liliana. Don't like using the Binding on a Liliana, but we're just not going to be able to attack into it. So we draw a Shijeki. Um, but we'll play our Fable here. Get a 2-2. Two -two. Start filtering away at our deck a little bit. So opponent did discard a Titan of Industry up there. So probably on a Jund reanimator deck themselves. I guess we're a reanimator deck as well. So we can... We discarded the Prophecy there, I think that might have been a small misplay there. Um, shouldn't have done that as that's a better card draw than Fable in itself. Anyway, they bolt our 2-2 and we get to drop our other Fable. So not a great start for us here, certainly on the defensive. Fifth land for our opponent. And a War Chief. All right, that's a good one. So a 5-3, they gain three life, and when it dies, it leaves a 4-4 behind. So we do have Drag to the bottom of our, in our hand, obviously, and um, but we would be leaving a 4-4 on the opponent's side. It's not ideal, but binding, exiling the War Chief is perfect answer to that. And yeah, we get to attack for two and gain a treasure out of this. Finally get some damage in. So drag to the bottom might not be the perfect card here unless they can start putting down some creatures. Uh, smaller creatures and not these big ones. It's certainly not going to be great if they do manage to play a Titan. 
as the most the drag can do is six damage. Uh, so war chief there for our opponent. All right, so we have our second Kiki Jiki on the battlefield. So hopefully we can start um, using each, using them to copy each other as the game progresses. But Archangel of Wrath here can deal with the War Chief, and yeah, it leaves a four four behind. But we've got to start dealing with this creature at some point. We get to copy the Archangel here, and. Uh, Attack our opponent for three in the air, gain three life, and we go up to 29. Okay, seven mana for their opponent. Um, enter a Titan of Industry. Annoying card, really, when we're playing with bindings in our deck, but it is what it is. And they take out the Leyline with the Liliana. Okay, I might have taken out the War Chief there, but. If they want to take out Liliana, use Liliana, that's fine. I think the creature might be better though for them. Okay, and they make a sack of creatures, so they must have a good card in their hand. We can just get rid of the 2-2 two -two, and yeah, we can take 4 damage. Go down to 25. Okay, another drag to the bottom. So one option we have here is to attack, let the opponent block and then drag to the bottom the whole board. However, that would leave us with nothing. And um, we only have one Archangel of Wrath in the deck. So I think in this instance, it's better just to create a load of angels, tack down the Lil Liliana, get that off the board. Okay, an opponent didn't block anyway, so they may know that we have something else in our hands. Obviously, they probably know we're playing the domain deck themselves. Okay, and they attack us for 15. That is a big attack. We go down to 16, though. We can take big hits like that, as we've been gaining a lot of life. Uh, Zeus's many journey for our opponents. And we draw another Fable. Okay, so the option here is, do we attack with one Archangel now and then in the opponent's end step make two more copies so that we can attack with five next turn or do we just go now and I think I decided to go now just in case the opponent does have any removal in their hands let's get nine damage gain nine life whilst we can opponent down to six so we should be able to eke out a victory here we get to play our other fable So annoyingly, the drag to the bottoms aren't great against the Titan of Industry. And they gain three more life. They attack us with their Rhinos. Okay, well, we're again on 25 life. We can take that damage. We go down to 17. And a Harvester. So that's going to be a problem going forward. As it can kill one of our reflections of Kiki Jiki. But they decide to use their blood token instead, so the harvester can't kill our creature next turn. Okay, but they find a flame best bolt that can do it anyway, so nice little top deck there as we draw a land. Okay, so what to discard? So these drag to the bottoms aren't really doing anything in our hand. The Jetmere's Garden we're probably going to cycle anyway, so it probably doesn't really matter what we discard. But I uh, opt for the two board wipes. I don't want to clear my board. If we clear our board, the 7-7 seven, seven survives and uh, we take out all our creatures as we draw a Celestus and a Bankbuster. Play our Bankbuster. Start drawing some cards. I guess we could have played the Celestus first there. And then the Bankbuster as we draw a drag to the bottom. So we ended up with a board wipe in our hand anyway. Okay, 
they will, uh, I mean, we could make a 3 4 and attack with it just to gain 3 life. But um, the plan is to do it in the opponent's end step here anyway, so we can attack with a couple of angels next turn. Opponent attacks with uh, the Titan and the two Rhinos. So that's 15 damage. So I like the, I like what they're doing here. They're putting the pressure back on us. Sitting back doesn't do anything for them. As we can keep gaining life. And this way, we're not necessarily forced to block this turn, but we never know what they might have in their hands. So we'll take 11, go down to six. And another Harvester, okay. So our opponent appears to have sort of stabilized here. And yeah, they kill our Kiki Jiki uh, before our end step, unfortunately. So we make a 3 4, but it's just going to die anyway. All right, so we need some good way to get out of this and shoulder it. I mean, that is a decent card there. Draw with the Bankbuster. And a ley line. All right, so that's the kind of card we'd be looking. We were looking for. We can finally get rid of this uh, Titan of Industry, and then if we absolutely wanted to, we could um, sort of drag to the bottom of the board, take out the whole board. But again, if we do that, we lose our threats. But we do have a really decent threat in our hand in Shieldred. So if we do this smartly, we can uh, ensure that we keep some pressure on them. We get to drop the Celestus and hold open this bind in. Really tough game here. Both of us are on low lives, but we both got enough sort of things on the battlefield to sort of take over. We've got a couple of um, artifacts here. We can start using to draw some cards. His opponent uses their Harvester to take out our other Kiki Jiki. Fair enough. And uh, yeah, they attack with the team. But we can bind their industry here. And Archangel has three power and lifelink, so we can block this 3-3, three, three, uh, take eight, and gain three. So we go to one, which isn't dead, but it's looking pretty bad for us. Again, we can drag to the bottom this board, so I'm not really too concerned right now. We're not of dying immediately, but opponent's top dates are always really good. Oh, and it's a shouldered restoration. They bring back the Titan. They take seven damage for that. They're down to one now. They gain five life to go back up to six, and they get to destroy the binding to get the other Titan back. Oh, wow. What a turn by the opponent here. And they... Uh, get another titan i guess yeah they're going to destroy another artifact or another enchantment and gain another five life so what a turn here all right they go for the bank buster okay so our card draw is gone as we find a cruelty of gigs super interesting it's a shame the opponent played their titan from their graveyard that turn as we can't take that but at the bottom of our graveyard is a titan of our own so we can gain back five life guess put down a rhino so cruelty of gigs perfect here we have to play on number three on uh, the third chapter anyway as we can't take three damage off chapter two so we could take the war chief if we wanted to but titan is the absolute number one choice here and yeah we get to gain some life make a rhino breathe a little bit more on six six life obviously no attacks here at least we can block one of these titans as opponent uh, cycles a Zeotora. what a game this has been a roller coaster game both of us have been on uh, one life and opponent gets in with titan and titan okay well this is an easy um, block and a double block. 
uh, but they also go in with the two rhinos as well. So once again, we are going to take eight uh, in game three. And we're actually going to come out with a creature still on the board here. So that's a nice turn of events. And we get to drop a shouldered next turn, so... I wonder if this game has turned around a game for us here. As we go down to minus two, back up to one. So that's the second time we've been on one in this game. And the Celestus triggers. Okay, a herd migration. So that's our win condition off the top. All right, so this is a tough choice. We need to discard a card here. We can discard a shouldered or a drag to the bottom because I'm not discarding the herd migration. And I guess the board wipe that we've been holding all game might be the card to get rid of here. So we draw a land, but we do get to drop this herd migration. And uh, yeah, that's five three threes on the board, plus our four four. We'll keep the Zeatora in our hand in case Liliana is dropped. Um, I just want to keep Sheldred around. Get to attack the opponent for four, they're down to seven. But there's a whole herd of beasts on the battlefield and no idea how they're going to get through this. Feel comfortable, obviously, no meat hook anymore. So that would have been my biggest problem with this deck last week. And uh, no opponent scoops it up. Fantastic. Twice we went down to one life, but we managed to eke out the victory. All right, on the draw here. And this looks like a decent hand. I mean, we have many tap lands, but we do have the Leyline Blind Binding and Sheldred, which are two of my favorite cards. So we'll be keeping this one. Opponent with a tapped Ores of Land. So we get to play our Rafine's Tower here. And we drew a fourth land as well. So I like our hand here. Okay, opponent on Mardu, it seems. And yeah, we get to play a Jet Mist Garden and already got Binding on board here. So surely the opponent must suspect something along those lines. As who plays Rafine's Tower and Jet Mist Garden? And doesn't play Domain. All right, it's a wedding announcement for our opponent. So that is one of the easiest Leyline Binding targets of the day. As we draw another land. All right, no more lands, please, deck. Uh, so we get to play our briefcase and Rafine's Tower. So ramping away. And a Spirited Companion. Digging for something and leaving open a black or red mana. So presumably some removal there as we draw a another land. So that's land, land, land off the top of our decks. All right, not bad though. We get to play a Cruelty of Gix here and have a look to see what they have in their hand. Yeah, we'll play it on our chapter one. And reluctantly, they show us what they've got. So a couple of Harvesters, a Paragon, an Underdog and Liliana. So that's a pretty decent hand there for our opponent. And it is a cut down that they've got as well. So normally you'd want to take, I think, whatever they want to play next. But in this case, they could pretty much play anything. Creature wise, we can deal with most of the creatures with a variety of different ways in our deck. Liliana, we only have a couple of exile effects. So I think I would like to take Liliana in this particular situation. Although it won't have too much effect on our board right now. Again, it's going to be difficult for us to get rid of immediately. We could find a Exile effect with our Cruelty next turn. But we could easily find a board wipe and clear every creature they want to put down as well. So they play a Fable, which they must have just drawn, because that's the card I would have taken had that been in their hand. And another Briefcase for us. So yeah, we get to search for a card in our deck. It's not obvious exactly what card we do want to take now. But the safest choice is just the other Cruelty of Gix. And yeah, knowing that they have no hard removal in their hand, uh, we get to safely drop a Shieldred. And opponent's going to take two damage in their upkeep here. And the nice effect here of Shouldered being played just after Fable is that the opponent now has the option to discard and draw 
up to two cards, so they could take up to four more damage here. And they do just that, they discard a cut down and an underdog. So Shield has already done six damage to our opponent here, so I'm glad we played this card out. And a Harvester, okay. And another Harvester, all right, so two Harvesters on the battlefield. Still can't kill the Shieldred next turn. And uh, we get to put the Underdog from the graveyard onto the battlefield with our Cruelty of Gix. And we do draw a board wipe there, so we could clear this board. Um, we can do five damage, so we would kill our Shieldred. Obviously in the past, a Meat Hook there, we would just be playing a Meat Hook for two, which would keep our shoulder alive. So glad that card's gone because it was uh, too one-sided for my liking. But we do get to play the Cruelty of Gix and get rid of their Paragon from their hand. Basically, the Paragon we can return ourselves in a couple of turns. So looking forward to playing that card. But we don't have a lot going on apart from Shieldred here. We do get to search for, for any card from our deck next turn. Okay, opponent attacks with their 2-2. Okay, so this is a, a smart ploy on their behalf. They want us to block with the Shieldred here. Put the Shieldred down to 3 toughness or put Mark 2 damage on it and then use a Harvester to finish Shieldred off. But I'm not going to fall for that trick because I've done that trick many times myself. Yeah, we block with the 1-1. One, one. And a Fable there. Okay, so next turn the Reflection of Kikijiki is going to be able to make a copy of um, the Harvester and then it's going to be able to take out Shouldered anyway. So in this particular situation, Drag to the Bottom is going to be the perfect card here as we're going to be able to just clear this board down. We did draw Herd Migration, so that's going to be the card we use to hopefully win us the game. So all of our best cards in our deck are going to be played in the next couple of turns here. So we might as well attack with Shouldered, it's going to die in a second anyway. And yeah, they block with their 1 1. And the drag to the bottom here to clear the board. Now, the nice thing here with having Cruelty of Gix on the battlefield is that we're going to be able to use the third chapter to bring back Shouldered next turn as well. So that was a perfect time for a board wipe. We get to play our briefcase here and our land and hold open binding for any immediate threats. So I'm pretty confident now in uh, finishing out this, closing out this game. We've got our win condition in our hand and we have some flashy removal here to deal with whatever card they may put onto the battlefield this turn. Just a swamp for our opponent there. They do have a Takanuma and they've clearly got a tenacious underdog as well. Okay, and they pass their turn. So we have our Leyline Binding we could use here on the Fable. And uh, next turn we're going to be using up most of our mana on the Herb Migration. And we draw a second Herb Migration. Didn't use the Binding there as uh, I didn't feel it was necessary. We get to put Shoulder down. We get to play five three threes, and suddenly from being overpowered by the opponent, we've got an enormous board state here, including instant speed exile effect in our hand. And we can even attack the opponent here for one damage. Yeah, Takanuma. 
Not sure what they could possibly find. Oh, they, they're looking for the Paragon. That's fine. Fair enough. But they don't have enough mana really to cast much next turn and the binding should see us through to a victory. So this uh, board wipe combo with the herd migration and the Gix is really quite powerful at the moment. You definitely couldn't play this herd migration last week as just a simple meat hook would be clearing the board here. Um, and even though there are still board wipes available, they're not quite so one-sided or advantageous for, for the person casting the spell. So pretty glad that card's gone. Clearly without the Meat Hook Massacre as well, it might not necessarily make some of the uh, black decks weaker, but it will certainly allow some of the other aggro decks and creature-based token decks and go-wide decks to come to come to fruition though. So it's definitely going to open up the meta a little bit as uh, opponent does drop their Sarah Paragon. Couple of mana to work with here, so... It's not much they can do though. And it's just a spirited companion. And we can just put the opponent out of their misery because they're going to also draw a card here through Sheldred. Sorry, they're going to draw a card for their companion. The shoulder's going to do another two damage. And we can exile their blocker here. And even their blood tokens, they're going to start losing life on. And opponent scoops it up. No way back. On to the next one. All right, on the play. With an acceptable hand, there is no green mana, so... We're definitely going to be wanting that soon as we cannot play Shijeki until that happens. We draw a drag to the bottom, so if we don't draw a green mana, at least we can use the drag to get us out of any mire that we may find ourselves in. So we draw a Terra Sunder. Okay, so we still need green mana for that. Opponent with a Loam Speaker. And a Tracker. Okay. So green black it seems and they pass their turn they don't attack that's fine with me we get to play our jet Miz garden so at least we've got some green mana here but yeah opponents on a pretty aggressive start here presumably they're gonna create three three all right so that's seven damage coming our way so already down to 13 I guess the problem with the Lone Speaker is that the creature they create cannot be removed with the drag to the bottom here. But we can just deal with the Lone Speaker, I guess, anyway, so that's fine. So here we go. Back to parity here, but we are on 12 life. As we did draw a Urberg re repossession there. So that's kind of a a card that we can use later on in the game if we need to return any of our one-off creatures back to our hand. We draw a briefcase, so definitely going to play that as we don't have much mana to play with as the turns go on. Pass our turn, and opponent cracks their clue. All right, so much slower start from us here. But luckily the opponent's not being too aggressive anymore. They do have a couple of Dugan defends the temples. And uh, we do have another drag to the bottom of our hand though, so we can clear the board again. But we must well wait till these things transform. Put it with Jungle Hollow. And yeah. Attack us for two. No blocks. No point. And we get to use our home migration at end of turn here. As we can look for more land. They are hovering over our briefcase. Oh, it's a Terra Sunder on our briefcase. All right, fair enough. So we may as well either use a, use the green mana for the Terra Sunder or herb migration right now. And if we're going to be clearing this board soon, I think getting rid of the enchantment is the best option. So our opponent kind of play, forced our hand a little bit there. 
as I may not have used anything on that turn. Okay, we draw a land anyway, so that's nice. Another tap land though. And yeah, just clear the board down. No point attacking, it's gonna block. I guess they might not have blocked. But board is wiped and back to parity again. This time on nine life, an opponent plays a land and passes, so not sure what they've got in their hand. Probably just removal though, so. We are building up for a herd migration. We get to play an Archangel of Wrath here. And opponent kills it. So it is just removal, I'd say, in their hand. We hold open our binding here, which is nice. And our angel there was exiled, so the repossession is not going to work. Opponent with eight mana. All right, Fable's a really nice card here, as uh, it's an immediate creature and something that the opponent will have to deal with if they want, if they don't want us to gain the value. So maybe if they had held back on their Terra Sunder, that Fable would have been a better option, but a Defiler for our opponent. And yeah, we've been sandbagging this binding ourselves, so this is a fantastic target here. Oh, okay, so it was a tail swipe that they had in their hand. They just didn't have a creature on the battlefield to use it with. Fair enough. Goodbye, Defiler. And we draw a Cruelty. We get to um, discard our Shijeki and Erberg and draw a Celestus and a Binding. So we're slowly getting up to the seven mana needed for herd migration. There's no way the opponent's going to be able to deal with that. Unless they're running a board wipe and they just play the pack leader and pack it in. Nice. So thanks for watching. This deck seems great. I love toolbox style decks and using Gix allows us to answer many problems, but Leyline of Binding continues to be the star of the show. Anyway, subscribe if you can for future videos. And as always, thanks for watching.